So at this point, both these devices have had a pretty significant impact on my life, and we'll take a look at the technological specs, the practical benefit, the ease of use, as well as research implications with these devices to determine what might be the best one for you to purchase if you're thinking about doing so. So one person has died on this thing every year since 2017. That's what was going through my mind as I was hiking up this ridge that was less than the width of a sidewalk with a 1500 foot drop on either side. This was in Zion National Park and I'm talking about Angel's Landing, which is notorious as being a very difficult hike. Something like 16 people have died on this thing since it opened. And this is late summer. It's about 100 degrees Fahrenheit at the base. My other two friends had already turned back just because it was a hot day and it was intense and uh, not for the faint hearted. And when I looked over the edge, I started to get dizzy. And what I realized is that I stopped breathing. And when you stop breathing and get dizzy in a situation like that, that's how you end up having a fall. And then I realized that's probably why quite a few people have actually fallen off of Angel's Landing is because they lost their focus, forgot to breathe, got dizzy, got disoriented, took a wrong step and had a fall. As I was up there just looking at this amazing landscape, it dawned on me, this is exactly what Focus Calm is trying to train you with. The realization that you stop breathing when you're under intense situations is pretty profound. Not only for things like that that can be life and death circumstances, but also in sports that are high paced and demanding of your utmost attention or you're gonna get hurt. Sure, there's been some criticism of these devices over the years. Do they actually even get real brain data? What's the practical benefit? And I couldn't think of a better example of where this brain training has actually paid off and helped me in my life. So today we're doing a comparison of Mendy versus Focus Calm. I've talked about Mendy a lot in my previous videos where Doing Mendy training actually helped me get off anti-anxiety medication. So at this point, both these devices have had a pretty significant impact on my life. And we'll take a look at the technological specs, the practical benefit, the ease of use, as well as research implications with these devices to determine what might be the best one for you to purchase if you're thinking about doing so. On the surface level, both of these devices seem pretty similar in that they track brain data from your frontal lobe mostly, they communicate with your smartphone via Bluetooth, but these are actually quite different different devices with different modalities. Focus Calm uses electroencephalography EEG, whereas Mendy uses FNIRS or functional near infrared spectroscopy. And that's not all. When you look at their apps, there's actually quite a bit of a different philosophy. Mendy has one exercise that's very nuanced, deep, encourages you to do that one exercise every day, whereas Focus Calm is more gamified. Their games are more flashy, easier to understand, and they have more clear objectives for people that are not used to more traditional neurofeedback training. On the surface, they're pretty similar. Both use Bluetooth, weigh around 50 to 100 grams, and primarily use brain data from the frontal lobe. As far as practical impact goes, I'm giving both Mendy and Focus Calm four out of five. When I first started training with Mendy, I wasn't sure if I should use different meditative techniques with it or breathing exercises, but what I realized over time is that if you allow yourself to get excited when the ball goes up, that really takes care of the subconscious processing through operant conditioning that you need to increase blood flow to your frontal lobe for better focus. I covered in previous videos where I was getting off of anxiety medication and I needed to clear my mind and focus during the day without going back to past traumatic memories. So I started doing Mendy exercises every day for several months. And what I noticed is that there was this Mendy pull effect that I could use as a primer both for meditations and for getting into flow state throughout the day. And this ability to increase blood flow to your frontal lobe is being recognized by some top institutions like NASA that's using it to train their astronauts for better focus for things like spacewalks and travel long distances for missions to Mars. I also think that FNIRS is a better fit for astronaut and fighter pilot helmets because it's less prone to signal contamination than EEG is. As far as focus calm goes, I think the most practical benefit of it is that it teaches you to relax and maintain your breath during periods of stress like hiking up Angel's Landing. Focus calm is also working with a lot of professional organizations like the Olympic bobsled team to help them stay calm during their intense bobsled races, as well as race car drivers. Their mantra is learn, practice, and challenge, and the whole process is quite different than traditional neurofeedback setups, which really helps the company stand out. My favorite games are the spaceship flyer where you have to stay calm and navigate through different obstacles, as well as training videos like doing the bobsled experience. For training variety, Focus Calm gets 4.5 out of 5, whereas Mendy only gets 3 
three out of five. Now I'd much rather have one neurofeedback game that is very effective and brings a lot of value to my life than having a plethora of other games that are less effective. Now that's not the distinction I'm making between Mendy and Focus Calm. I think Focus Calm has a lot of great games that bring a lot of value, but they also have some other content that I'm not that happy with, to be honest. I think the high paced games of Focus Calm where they teach you how to breathe and relax are very valuable, but I do find the Calm meditation games to be lacking compared to other platforms like Mendy and the Muse. If you relax during these games, the relax score tends to go up and you get different experiences like a city landscape filling in with color or a bird flying to avoid obstacles, but the feedback in the neurofeedback game isn't very nuanced. Basically, if I relax, I know that the game is going to reward me for doing that, but it doesn't fit in well to my meditation routines where I like to focus on different energy centers, do spinal breathing, and more advanced meditation concepts that these games don't really support. And at this point, this category might not totally be fair to Mendy because they are a younger company than Focus Calm, and they've really spent a lot of time perfecting that neurofeedback exercise on their app right now and giving you a score that really reflects how your brain is operating. So although Focus Calm has a lot more variety, Mendy has made a tremendous initial exercise and they are working on other games to add to the app, but doing so in a very focused evidence-based way. And Focus Calm, of course, is also following evidence-based guidelines, but I think that they have some work to do on some of their games. Focus Calm also has some great executive function games where you train your memory and your attention, and those are really fun as well. And those games are very straightforward. I mean, you can imagine, hey, for memory, we're going to test your memory by flipping different cards to train your impulse control, we're going to do a modified game version of the Stroop test. Those games are very self-explanatory and I think that they are great for the population that's not used to traditional neurofeedback exercises and they need a little bit more clear objectives to do so. And for me, what comes to mind is young children, athletes that don't do a whole lot of meditation or neurofeedback exercises, and the elderly that might not be as familiar with technology. So I'm going to give both devices four out of five for ease of use. Both devices are so simple, you just throw it on, turn on the power, it connects immediately to your smartphone and you're off to the races. Mendy has the one exercise, but that might be a little challenging for people that aren't used to neurofeedback exercises. That's why I created a training video a couple of weeks ago about how to release dopamine when the ball goes up so that you get your brain learning through operant conditioning. Whereas Focus Calm is a lot more gamified and will capture the attention of people that are not used to applying meditation concepts to neurofeedback. And for those of you who are new here, I'm Dr. Cody Rawl, your medical doctor confidant. Tech for Psych is a place where we expand minds through neurotechnology. If you found this information helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you support the channel by hitting the thumbs up button and subscribing. Even if you don't normally subscribe to YouTube channels, it really helps Tech for Psych with the YouTube algorithm so that we can get this information to more people, bringing more resources into the space, and as a result, further developing neurotechnologies for you and humankind. For personal research, this is where both of these devices could use some improvement so I'm giving them both three out of five. I can't help but compare them to the Muse where if you get a Muse, you can buy a third-party app called Mind Monitor for $15 and have full access to all the different brain waves that you can see off the device if you want to do your own little experiments. For both Mendy and Focus Calm, there's not options that are as clear as that for people that just want to see how their brain is functioning. Now, Mendy is definitely hindered by the very nature of functional near-infrared spectroscopy or FNIRs because they are using continuous continuous wave F nears, they have to use complex mathematics like the modified Beer-Lambert law, where the device is detecting the scattering of red light to make inferences about how much blood is there and how much of it is oxygenated and deoxygenated. As a result, you get somewhat arbitrary numbers that have to be compared to previous numbers to see how much blood flow is increased to the frontal lobe. Now, I know they are looking into different options for percentage increase of blood flow to the frontal lobes so that you could use that with some kind of research app to test different things on yourself, but they're not quite there yet. And Focus Calm doesn't have an app where you can just look at the raw EEG data, but they have a really cool program called Neuromaker in which they're doing partnerships with academic institutions like high schools and colleges to teach children and young adults about 
EEG and neuroscience, but you have to contact the company to set something up to get access to that data so it's not as plug and play as my monitor with the Muse. And I'll definitely be putting out a video in the near future on Neuromaker so you guys can understand what that program is and see if you'd be interested in getting involved with it. As far as cost goes, I'm going to give Mendy a 4 out of 5, whereas Focuscom has a 3.5 out of 5. And that's mainly because I'm docking Focuscom a little bit for having the subscriber model. So Mendy, you buy the device for $350, you've got lifetime access to the app and the device, and they keep coming up with new updates and that's the price. Focuscom, you can buy the device for $200, but the app usage with that is very limited unless you get a membership. So you can pay $10 a month, or you might as well just get the lifetime access, which is $150, which brings the total price up to $350, just like Mendy. So as you can see, the prices are very similar. Honestly, I wouldn't use price difference in this context to make a decision on which device is right for you. But if you get a bad taste in your mouth from subscription services, that might influence you a certain way. I've really enjoyed both these devices, and obviously there's a lot of overlap, but I tend to see Mendy as a very nuanced neurofeedback exercise for increasing blood flow to your frontal lobe for focus. And this is great for people that are into meditation, that want to improve their focus at work, and are comfortable doing an exercise where the goals are less well defined. And I think of the young professional biohacker crowd that have a lot of discipline to do the exercise every day and the internal awareness to notice differences to bring it into their productivity during the day. Focus Calm is also very easy to use and it's very gamified and entertaining for people that are not used to neurofeedback or the philosophies behind neurofeedback and maybe have less internal awareness so they need those beginner level games to say, hey, you know, if you get into a stressful situation, focus on your breathing, stay calm, and your mental performance will be better, as well as some executive function games like improving memory and impulse control. So you can see where focus call might be a little bit better for people that are less technologically prone or not used to neurofeedback, people like children, elderly, and high-paced sports professionals that are a little less geeky about nuanced energy manifestations from neurofeedback and meditation. If you're a young professional trying to improve focus and motivation in the workplace, you probably go with the Mendy. If you tend to seize up in high-intensity situations and you are an athlete, or you want to get something more simple but still trains the brain for your child or parent, go with the Focus Calm. Hope that helps. If you want to check out each device in more detail, check out these dedicated review videos and I'll see you on the other side.